welcome to the Fat Unathletic Nerds Talking Sports Podcast. I am your host, Zach Daniels, and tonight I'll be flying solo. No man, Darley. No Lonnie. No Brick. What am I doing, man? They're busy. I should just go to sleep. But no. No, 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 no. I couldn't go one week without making a podcast for you guys. So uh, all the boys are busy tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my thing by myself. This is the first ever episode of A Shot with Zach Daniels. That's right. It's just me tonight, and what we're going to do is I have a shot of bourbon here. I do not have Jack Daniels tonight. Am I allowed to say that? Whatever, I just did. Um, I have a shot of bourbon, and I already had a couple shots to kind of loosen up. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to down this bad boy, and we're going to talk about Devontae Smith going to the Philadelphia Eagles at number 10 after a trade-up with their hated rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. Mind-blowing. All right, let's do this. Down the hatch. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. Get the hair standing up again. Loosen up a little more. Probably going to be too loose for this one. But, hey, that's what you're here. You're here to listen to me talk about sports. A little bit buzzed. Oh, man. <laughs> what a disaster I'm already off to. Uh, hey, follow, like, subscribe, whatever. Do 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 the thing on social media, all right? We got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Funts Podcast. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, just look up Fat Unathletic Nerds Talking Sports. YouTube, same, th- same thing, same deal. Um, yeah, you'll find content. I'm not going to be recording this one video wise, but you get to hear my sexy voice. Isn't that enough? That's all you need. You don't need any more than that. God, this is a train wreck. I don't even know why, why I thought this was a good idea. You know, I, 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 I had to have one or two, uh, to get ready. And then I had three or four because I was a little nervous, but Right now, we're in the sweet zone after that that last one. So, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this, you guys. We're going we're gonna to get through this. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Welcome to A Shot with Zach Daniels. So, the last time we had a podcast was last Thursday. And that was the NFL Draft. The NFL Draft, we had a party. It was Lonnie's birthday. And we had a great time. You know, had a bunch of friends over. Had a bunch of food, fantastic. Man, Darley and uh, his lady friend, they brought some great food. We were we were all stuffed. Uh, plenty of beers, plenty of drinks. It's 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 nice to get back to a little normalcy, you know. Hang out with some friends, watch the NFL draft, complain about what your team picks, who your team picks, not what, who your team picks, and. Um, I don't know, as an Eagles fan, I had a great time because me and Brick were on pins and needles because we were just, I was just terrified. If you saw the preview for it, I was terrified minutes before that NFL draft started. I was, I'm not going to lie to you guys, really thought Howie Roseman, the GM of the Philadelphia Eagles, was going to do some out of left field shit, get another defensive end or an offensive lineman, you know, just something that like, you know, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. But why? Just just get the guy you need. We needed wide receiver. We needed cornerback. Get get one of those guys. And we got one of the best wide receivers in recent years, in my opinion. I think he's I think Devontae Smith is one of the best wide receivers out of college football in a while. And you wouldn't know that. Because he is apparently only six foot, one hundred and sixty-six pounds. That was a big knock on him going into the NFL draft. Oh yeah, by the way, this guy won the fucking Heisman. But uh, I just want to let you know that people have been calling him apparently the Slim Reaper. Let me 
Repeat that one. They've been calling Devontae Smith the Slim Reaper. Can you name a better fucking nickname? There is no nickname better than that. That is badass. That is worth a top 10 pick. It's insane that he went to number 10. And that is why I'm very happy that Howie Roseman took the opportunity and jumped to number 10 instead of just sitting at number 12 to get him, especially knowing, I I honestly did not know the Giants were going to do this, but the Giants were apparently going to take a wide receiver. And they did. They took Kadarius Toney later in the round because, you know, they're desperate. Anyway, the thing that's most shocking about all of it, too, is um, the Dallas Cowboys traded with them. Really, really shocking because I, I, don't, I don't like trades within the division. I never do. I remember the, the last time we had Orlando Skandrick come from the Cowboys. He was a scrub with the Cowboys, in my opinion, and he became an even bigger scrub with the Eagles in like half a season. And then he got cut. And then he went on, I think it was FS1. I think he was he was going on channels talking crap about the Eagles and Howie Roseman. And honestly, the stuff he said about Howie Roseman, I kind of, they, they kind of start, you look back at him and you start thinking, wow, man, maybe he was telling the truth. But, um, you know, I couldn't believe when it, when it said the Cowboys traded their pick and then it just the midnight green and the logo popped up in the corner. I was like, holy shit. Like, there's... That that was not what I expected to happen. And the fact that it was only a couple spots, it was going to be the Cowboys, Giants, Eagles, and it just flipped. It was Eagles, Giants, Cowboys. And because of our pick, taking Devontae Smith, the Giants moved back in the draft. <laughs> and it was... It was what, a, what a turn of events it was. And, um, you know, if you listen to the podcast for last week, the, the draft special we did, it's a long one. Not going to lie. It was really hard editing props to Steve brick. Good job on you getting through all that. That had to be, that'd be rough. Tons of people in one room. That was, man, that was mayhem. But, uh, you know, getting, getting Devontae Smith gives Jalen hurts a number one receiver. So. I mean, it's something that I feel like we haven't had since Deshaun Jackson. And and people want to talk about how Devontae Smith is too small. Dude, Des- Deshaun Jackson was small, but he was fast. The difference between Deshaun Jackson and Devontae Smith is... Devontae Smith is a freak. Like, have, you got to watch his highlights, man. It's just the way he plays. It's unbelievable. And I found some stats that are pretty insane. I mean... Here, wait one second. Let me pull these bad boys up. Okay, so in case you didn't know, in 2019, the Alabama Crimson Tide, the school that Devontae went to, Alabama, absolute dynasty, a, a, a freight train of NFL talent every year. Um, in 2019, Devontae Smith was surrounded by first round wide receivers. Wide receivers that were picked in the NFL draft in the first round. He had Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell, the guy who went four picks before him to the Miami Dolphins. In 2019, he was targeted more than all three of those guys. He was targeted more than all three of those other first round wide receivers. And he and he outdid all of that. It was it honestly ready. Jalen Waddle had a little over 500 yards, six touchdowns. Henry Ruggs had a little over 700 yards, seven touchdowns. Jerry Judy, now he was a freak and I think he's going to be really good for the Denver Broncos in the future. And if they keep him and Cortland Sutton, that's your one-two punch right there. Jerry Judy had 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Devontae Smith was over 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. That's fucking insane, man. And he and that was tw- that's 2019. He was only better in 2020. 
yeah, you got the people that sat out because of COVID. Yeah, you know, it's it was a weird season. But, dude, I, how can you knock the guy for being six foot, 166 pounds when well, he's going out and dominating the competition in the toughest conference in college football? It's insane. I think he's going to make a big splash on the Eagles. I, I, I really think he's going to make a huge splash on the Eagles. And, 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 you know, I realize everyone talks shit about the Eagles lately. And I don't blame them. It's very easy to talk shit about a 4-11-1 team. But it's, it's, it's all over. Like it's, The slate is wiped clean. New coach. New quarterback. With an offseason. Starting the whole year, all 16 games. It's it's arguable like Carson Wentz could have been benched after week eight. After half a season, you would have been like, wow, this this is just, dude, it, you're just sucking right now. You have to sit down. I'm amazed it took so long to bench him. And I like the guy. I, I supported him. I don't like the way he left. I don't like how, you know, me and Brick will get into this, I'm sure, in the future. And Brick, Brick doesn't like him because he's soft and all this stuff. That's his favorite word to use, soft. Uh, you know, but you know, yeah, it was definitely not the prettiest exit. But uh, you know, a full off season, a new coach, a new system, a whole like pretty much a whole new coaching staff, a very young team. Looks like it's gonna be a very, very young team, on offense at least. Yeah, man, I, I I can't really say for sure. Like, how how can I say that this team is going to suck when I have no clue what this coach is going to do? I thought Doug Peterson was great, and then last year he was doing he was making some of the worst calls, the worst calls, like running read options to get two point conversions. It like it. Why would you do that? Why would you just do? Why would you do that? You had Goddard. You had Ertz. Like, you had Miles Sanders. Like, do something different. And the worst was when they did those read options with Jalen Hurts. Because last year, they were like, oh, yeah, Jalen Hurts is going to be a gadget player. All they ever did was have him go in there at quarterback and basically be a wildcat quarterback. He would get the snap. He'd run, like, up the gut or he'd hand it off. And then he'd be stopped for, like, a one- or two-yard gain. Maybe even a one- or two-yard loss. And I'm almost positive Hertz had like as many fumbles, maybe not as many fumbles. He had a bunch of fumbles last year. I don't have that stat in front of me. It was it was just the offense for the Eagles was just ugly last year. Both due to injury and just due to pure I don't know what the fuckery. So yeah, can't really I can't really gauge how we're gonna do this year. I saw someone tweet um, they're like, who's going to stop this offense? Um, and look, I love optimism, but they, but they tweeted, who's going to stop this offense? And it was a picture of, you know, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager, Devontae Smith. It's like, you got, you got Miles Sanders who had a meh year besides a couple nice hand, like really long runs. You had Jalen Hurts who played four games and lost three of them. You had Jalen Rager who was injured for a portion of the season and, and wasn't, all that impactful, if you ask me, the rest of the season. And then you have Devontae Smith, who's a rookie, and I think I think he's going to be great. I think Devontae Smith's going to be great, but how can you sit there, put those four guys on your screen, and be like, that's going to be an elite offense? No, I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm realistic. Like, I'm excited. Don't get me wrong. Really excited. I think, and I, I, and I think people are way too hard on Nick Sirianni. I think people are way too hard on Nick Sirianni. That dude, I love him already. I love him already. Because I feel like in Philadelphia, the way the fan base works, you got to have, you got to have like that, you got to have something special about you. And boy, is he special, man. It's, it's really interesting. Listen to him talk. But what you can tell is when he does an interview, he loves the game of football. He sounds so intelligent. He sounds like he knows exactly what he wants out of his players. Uh, you know, it, no, he hasn't called plays yet. He's about to. So, I, 
you know, we're going to we're going to really we're we're going to be in for a ride this year, Philly fans. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to hear what Brick has to say on all this because I mean, I I at this point all I can do is sit and wait. I can't I can't pretend I know what's going to happen. Oh, where am I? I guess I'll take another shot. Why the fuck not? I'm a little nervous here. I gotta loosen up. But, um, again, we're gonna plug it. Like, share, subscribe, follow, whatever platform it is. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Fat, unathletic nerds talking sports. You know. We're just doing the thing here, man. I'm just... I'm just riffing at this point. I'm just going through the motions. I don't even know what shot number this is. Just having fun. Oh, look at this. Lonnie's texting me. That's fun. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll I guess I'll take another shot. I mean what is it here? It's it's getting kinda late, but you know. Pff, who cares, right? We're doing a podcast. That's what we're doing. We're having some fun. Oh boy. <laughs> Other big one. <laughs> that was a big one. Ooh. Ugh. Uh, where was I? Um, yeah. Shit. <laughs> so anyway, um, let me get back to it. What, what were we, what were we going over? I got, I got sidetracked by another shot. Um, this is going to be a choppy edit job, isn't it? Oh, let's, let's, let's talk about the Cowboys real quick. Not because I want to. I'd actually rather not, but I'm going to do something rare. Cowboys fans, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys, all of you, thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, shaking hands with the devil. Same with us. I think we both walked away with our guys, you know, Cowboys got Micah Parsons. Uh, a very good linebacker out of Penn State. Some issues with his, with like char- he had like character issues or something. I don't know. They they say the same shit every year. He's got a high motor. Fuck ever. But Micah Parsons is a good linebacker, and they just had Sean Lee retire, so it made sense. Uh, you knew the 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 Giants. We all apparently the Eagles and Cowboys. We knew that the Giants are going to go for a wide receiver. So, uh, I like how the Cowboys turned around. Uh, I think the Cowboys, they were getting mocked a lot. And also a lot of people were saying they were looking for a cornerback and Patrick Sertain. And he went to the Broncos. So, you know, they probably just looked at it and was like, fuck. Well, you know, Philly, you want to, you want a wide receiver, right? Like, yeah. All right. Well, we're less afraid of you than the Giants. So we'll just trade with you and you can get your number one wide receiver right now. We'll just take number 12. Oh, cool. We just swapped. It was just it was just so insane to see that midnight green pop up in the in the bottom left corner of the screen. The Cowboys have traded their pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. I recommend you go back to our uh draft special podcast, that 3-hour long one that Brick edited. And just, I think it was the hour 23 minute, hour 24 minute mark. You will get the reaction of the entire room. Because me and Brick were in there. And we were just having, we we were freaking out obviously over the Cowboys trading the pick in general. When we saw the Eagles logo pop up, we we lost it, man. That was a, that was a highlight of the night, I think, personally. That was a great, that was a great moment from that podcast, that, that party in general. But with that, I mean, I wish for nothing but bad luck and losses to the Cowboys and their fans. Anyone listen to this? Yeah. If you're a Cowboy fan, I don't want you to win. 
I never want you to win. You'll never win. I've been riffing for a little while now, huh? That's what happens. That's what happens when you have a couple shots and start talking about sports. Get lost in the sauce. I don't know. You know, jumping into this, I wanted to try something new. Came up with a catchy name and a very simple idea. Felt like having a little bourbon tonight. Who knows how many times I'm going to end up doing this. I know we're trying to keep it up to a weekly podcast, so that's why I'm filling your void. All of our fans out there. (laughs) Oh, man. The Cowboys piss me off so much. But I don't know. I think the Giants piss me off a little more. You know, it's weird being a Philly fan in New Jersey. In New Jersey, we have the the Giants and the Jets fan bases, which, funny enough, both those teams play in New in New Jersey, in East Rutherford, in East Rutherford. I don't know, man. I mean, I think uh, that's all I really have to talk about. But I'm probably gonna riff for a little bit because I'm feeling uh, spicy right now. There's there's still some left in this little glass. It's like, do I want it? Should I want it? Should I put it back? It's a tough call, man. You know? <laughs> I'm just voicing my alcoholism at this point on the podcast. I'm not an alcoholic. I've actually very much calmed down drinking, but... Tonight, I don't know. You know, seeing the the cutting edge with Lonnie, I um, I was like, let me try something, and it turned into me drinking. Really can't hate on that though. I'm having a great time. You should have a shot while drinking this. I mean, while listening to this, you know what I mean. Oh fuck. What else is there to talk about? It's really just waiting for the Eagles at this point for me, man. They're my favorite team in all sports. And um, I just can't wait to see Devontae Smith play. Can't wait to see him play. And I can't wait to see the single-digit number, man. Oh, so glad the NFL loosened up those restrictions. I, I didn't understand why they did have restrictions on numbers anyway. That was kind of stupid. If anyone knows, I mean, let me know. I don't know why they had those restrictions, but I love in college seeing these guys like Devontae Smith have number six, number one, just uh, just the most random numbers on the field at all times. And they would have multiple guys wear the same number, I've noticed. I have caught that in, past, in the past, so I, I'm just so glad. I, I can't wait. I don't know if they're on sale yet. Maybe I'll look, that, look at that right now. I'm trying to get a New Jersey and uh, a number six Smith. Jersey, that that just sounds dope to me. Especially if he's going to be our number one wide receiver. So, Well, I think I got everything I needed to get off my chest tonight. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did because I'm going to have to re-listen to all this to make sure I remember everything I said. I hope I didn't slur too much. <laughs> Jesus. Christ, I'm a fucking train wreck. And uh, one last time, it's the Fat Unathletic Nerds Talking Sports Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and YouTube. There you go. Give us a like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. This was A Shot with Zach Daniels. I hope you have a good night. Peace.